Hey there, hope you're doing well. Over the past couple of weeks, I've made some considerable progress on my little platformer, Natural Selection, so I thought it'd be fun to make another devlog and show off some of the new features that I added. Let's start off with some new menus. Having a versatile menu system has been really useful in this project, because I'm able to implement a lot of quality of life touches really easily. Some of these include an intro, that you saw if you were paying attention at the beginning of the video, and then a level select system. The level select system reads in a save file and then displays the player's current completion. I also implemented a completion screen when the player reaches the end of a level. I really like the little song that I put together here. It sounds both triumphant and at the same time really cartoony. And of course, there's a game over screen, which has our little friend as a ghost if you happen to lose all your lives. In my last devlog, I said that moving platforms were the next thing I wanted to implement. Since then, I have been able to implement a few. Probably my favorite at the moment are these little falling leaves. I think the animation turned out quite good on them, and I really like the unique staircase pattern they follow, it adds a really interesting platform challenge. I also coded up these simple platforms that were heavily inspired by Yoshi's Island, and I might need to change them because they're a little too similar, but these move in one direction until they hit what I call a bumper tile, which is a tile that reverses the direction of the platform. Using these bumper tiles, I have pretty good control over the path the platform's going to take, and it keeps the code relatively inexpensive because there's only a few tiles that need to be iterated through and checked for rectangular collisions. Probably the trickiest part about these horizontal platforms was getting the player to move with the platform. This took a little bit of fiddling around and I think I got it, but we'll see, I might run into some problems later on. I've actually yet to use these in a level, uh, they're just kind of here for testing purposes at the moment, but we'll see what kind of cool challenges I can implement with them. I also changed the snakes so they also utilized these bumper tiles. This was done in the name of optimization, that way I can generate a bunch of snakes on screen without running into any performance issues. The trade off here is that they are a little more limited as an enemy type, since they run off the bumper tiles they can really only go back and forth, but I can always add a more versatile version of the snake that can do things such as fall off a platform. If you were looking at the level select screen, you'll see that I've been working on some new levels. I thought it'd be fun to put my camera system to use, so I went ahead and made the second level, Chaparral 2, an auto scroller. The initial challenge here was to figure out collision with the screen. That way the player wouldn't just go off screen or face through the tiles if they didn't move. Once I got the screen to drag the player, I could figure out some more unique trials. This led me to creating the gopher enemy type. As the screen continually scrolls, you'll be forced into a gopher hole and have to avoid the rocks these guys drop at you from above. I think my favorite part about these guys is the particle effect and the screen shake that occurs when the rocks smash into the ground. This level is currently unfinished, but I think with the addition of the gophers and maybe even the moving platforms, it should be a nice change of pace from the relatively simple first level. I was inspired to make the first world the Chaparral because it's a place I know really well considering I'm from Southern California. Using my home as inspiration again, I chose the beach as the next world or environment our little duckling is going to have to traverse through. I started by drawing a backdrop and this took quite a bit of time, but I was fairly proud with the way it came out. I especially liked the colors and the little animation I added in the water. I then quickly drew these sand tiles which are pretty ugly even for my standards so I'll probably have to redo these later. Before touching up the sprites or adding any cool features, I really wanted to focus on building the swimming mechanic. This works by detecting if the players collided with a special water tile. This then changes their movement into something that more or less resembles the swimming you'd find in a 2D Mario game. The animated top water tiles and little bubble splashes were a nice touch. Back in October, I got to be featured on a podcast called The Creator Cafe. As part of a challenge, the host Tyler and I got to make some enemies for this upcoming beach level. Tyler made the pufferfish and I made the crab. I really like these designs, so it should be exciting to finally implement them soon. And on the subject of art, I thought it'd be fun to commission an artist to make a little cover art for this game. Well, she killed it, and this cover art is probably better than my game's ever going to be, so if you're interested in her work, definitely check out at Junmetri on Instagram, I'll leave a link in the description below. And one last little touch I want to mention here, if you look closely, I added a shadow to the egg, which can be seen on the bottom right of the menu screen. I learned how to do this by watching Arachnid56's tutorial on the subject. I found his tutorial really helpful, so I'm going to go ahead and link his channel in the description below. And it just goes to show, just because I make tutorials, it really doesn't mean that I don't have room to improve or learn. And I think that's everything I wanted to share today. Regarding future plans for the project, I want to try and finish at least 4 levels before I release a playable build, but with that being said, all of the code and assets are available on GitHub. I went ahead and added an MIT license, so the source code is open for anyone to play around with. 
The current goal right now is to achieve more of a polished tech demo than a commercial game, and I want to start transitioning to either Unity or Godot, but right now finishing this up is a priority. Thanks so much for watching. Regarding the state of the channel, December was a really busy month for me because of grad school apps and finals, but this channel still managed to see a lot of growth, so I'm really thankful for that. I definitely plan on posting more tutorials and content in 2021, and I'm also working on a game template that people can use, so more info on that later. Definitely consider subscribing to the channel and sticking around. I've also been getting a lot of requests to make a Discord server, so I went ahead and did that. Links in the description, and feel free to come out and ask questions or just chat with other devs. I hope you all take care, stay safe, and have a fantastic 2021.